Hello and welcome to the session Demystifying Query Store Plan Forcing. My name is Miloš Radivojevic. I'm very delighted for having the opportunity to speak at PASS Summit. I'm pretty sure almost all of you know what PASS does mean for the SQL Server community. Many SQL Server careers are built with the help and support of PASS. Use PASS.org to explore the actual PASS offer to help your career. Please do not forget the session evaluation. This is very important. Your feedback helps both organizers and speakers to prepare and deliver better content for future conferences and events. And please ensure that you have submitted the feedback before Friday, 20th November. So I'm Ilosha Divojevic, I'm Microsoft Data Platform MVP located in Vienna, Austria. I'm responsible for database development in the company Bivin, the largest online betting company, a part of the GVC holding. I'm co-founder of SQL Pass Austria and co-author of three SQL Server books. Here is my contact data. You can add me on LinkedIn or write an email if you have questions related to this presentation, query store or SQL Server. Here is our agenda for today. Since this is a 300 level session, I will just briefly introduce query store at the beginning, how it works, its architecture and what we can achieve with it. You will then see Query Store in action, how it helps us to identify and fix plan regression during SQL Server upgrade. I will explain what exactly happens when a plan is forced, when forcing plan is a good idea and when not. Plan forcing does not always work. Forced plan can fail and also SQL Server can ignore it. You will see when and why this happens. Finally, you will see what happens when you let Query Store perform an automatic plan correction for you. Let's start with a quick intro. Query Store is a troubleshooting feature introduced with SQL Server 2016, extended in 2017 and a bit in 2019. It stores the history of queries, execution plans, execution statistics details, such as query duration, CPU time, logical reads, and so on and from SQL Server 2017 weight statistics. This is a database feature. All this info is stored in a user database and it is persistent even in case of server restarts, failovers or crashes. It simply belongs to a database. In an on-prem database, query store is still disabled by default. This is one of the reasons why this great feature is not widely accepted and used as it deserves. In SQL Azure, Query Store is enabled by default. Query Store is available in all editions. Particular feature within it, automatic tuning requires the enterprise edition, but all the other Query Store functionalities are available in all editions. This slide shows the Query Store architecture. When a query is compiled in a database where Query Store is enabled, Query Store checks whether it has the information for that query stored or not. If not, it stores a single row for each compiled query in Query Store. It also checks for the execution plan for that query. If this is a new plan, it stores plan info into the plan store. For each query, a single row, for each plan, a single row. By default, up to 200 plans can be stored in Query Store. When the query goes to the execution engine, of course, Query Store does not store each execution. Here, there is no single row for one execution. That would be too heavy. It rather stores an aggregate information representing all executions per defined interval. Default interval is 60 minutes. That means for each executed plan, Query Store stores one row every 60 minutes. This goes into runtime store. Actually, up to three rows are possible since the query can be executed successfully, can be aborted or end up with exceptions. Finally, for each plan and interval, Query Store captures and stores weights info. Due to compromise with data storage and performance, weights are not stored as weight types, but grouped in weight categories. This is not the same granularity of information, but it can be still very useful in early phase of performance troubleshooting process. For performance reasons, plan, random stats, and weight stats are written first in internal in-memory tables and then moved to internal disk tables with a background job every 15 minutes by default. We do not have access to these tables. 
to find out and to explore what query store has collected, we can use public catalog views and special store procedures to perform actions in query store. Sys query store query text DMV contains information about query text, as you might guess. It has five columns. Query text is not compressed, is exposed as Envachamax. This DMV is in one to end relation with Sys query store query. For each query text ID, exists at least one query ID. Query store query DMV contains information about queries, and query is the basic operational unit in query store. Everything what you do here in query store is actually related to query ID. This DMV has 30 columns. It has in memory and disk table, is in one to one relation with Sys query store plan. For each query ID, there is at least one plan ID. Here you can see information collected by this DMV. So you can see query text, object ID, query hash, uh, information about parameterization, and many information about query execution and uh, compilation information. We distinguish between query text and query. The same query can be part of different database objects, and for query store, these are different queries, and in most of the cases for us to consider this example. I have a single query, select top one from sales order, order by order date, and this query uh, can be part of two store procedures, P1 and P2. And I can execute both store procedures, and in addition, execute the same query out of PROC as the ad hoc query. When we go to sys query store query text, we can see this is a single query text ID because we use the same query text. But when we go to query store query, we can find three, three different query IDs here for the same query text with different object IDs because we have two different store procs and object ID zero indicates that uh, this is an ad hoc query. Query store plan DMV contains information about plan. It has 23 columns. The entire plan is here. Many flags related to plan attributes and informations like compatibility level, engine version, plan hash, and uh, many flags. Is this the force plan? Is this a parallel plan, count of compiles, and compilation information? This query store runtime stats is where we have execution details. This DMV has 68 columns. That means a single row here, it's about 600 bytes. If your database do not have a lot of ad hoc queries, most of your query store storage is actually runtime stats. In my examples in production, about 87% of data is actually in query store is runtime stats. 68 columns, many information. So we have a max mean standard deviation average information for many parameters like CPU time, duration, logical reads, and so on. And we can have, as mentioned, up to three rows per plan and interval. Sys query store weight stats contains information about weights. And as mentioned, weights are grouped in categories. And this is how this DMV looks like. We cannot see here exact which CPU weight, but we can see that weight was related to CPU. Finally, query store runtime stats interval is a just lookup table for intervals. This runtime stats interval ID column is referenced in runtime and weight stats, and we just pick up here what is exact time related to this information there. So what can we achieve with query store? The most important achievement is to identify and fix plan regressions. Query store can help you to identify queries that perform well, but after some change or some time became slow. Query store can make them fast again. Usually plan regressions happens more often after big changes, such as an upgrade to a new version, hardware changes, server or database configuration changes, patching, and bigger application rollouts. Query store reduces the risk of upgrading, patching, or reconfiguring. Query store can also help you with troubleshooting process by answering questions such as, was this query slow last weekend? Why my query was slow last Saturday? What are unstable queries, queries with multiple plans? Which queries are unfinished or ended with an exception? You can find queries that consume most resources in Query Store. Query Store has some information that are not available 
when you query server cache. And in addition to this, the information is persist. With a little help of Query Store, you can learn a lot about your workload. Okay, let's see Query Store in action and its main use case from Microsoft point of view, definitely. In this demo, Query Store will help us to solve performance regression caused by upgrading to the latest compatibility level. Of course, when you upgrade to the new SQL Server version, if you want to use a full feature gallery, and you want, if not, why you upgrade, you have to set your database to the latest compatibility level. This action will apply new improvements and functionalities to some queries from your workload. However, for some of them, you can have performance regressions. And here is how Query Store can help you to mitigate this. I'm going to simulate upgrade from SQL Server 2012 to 2019. I will use the wide world importer sample database. I have restored from the backup available on this link. If you want to reproduce this demo, please download the backup from here. To make it simple, I have a single returning no rows. I have an index on this field picked by person ID. And uh, I, what I expect here is an efficient execution with nested loops join. Let's go to, to include the execution plan. So no rows, nested loops join based execution plan. So very quick. So now I will simulate upgrade. So ensure that we are on 110 compat level. Clear query store if I had something before that. Turn on query store with default configuration. And here's my workload. And here's my workload. This is a single query. I will execute it 50 times. And then I will switch to 150 compat level, which means upgrade to SQL Server 2019 and execute the same query again 50 times. Before I execute it, I will just use here query options and in greed option, I will just pick, sorry, I will just pick this card results after execution because I don't want to paint this header 50 times. And also I will check in this advanced set no countdown. I just don't want to paint number of uh, affected rows. So this card results here, set no countdown. Okay, so let's execute this. This is 110 compat level under the SQL Server 2012. So quick execution as we expe expected. Now 150 upgrade. I execute this again. You don't need query start to figure out that this execution was slower than one before the change. But let's have a look in query store. I will open top resource consuming queries query store report and here we have two plans. The old good one we saw earlier based on nested loops join, and the new one where SQL Server decided to use hash match join after the upgrade. Here on the left side is execution time, and when we mouse over this, we can see that before we upgrade in SQL Server 2012, we had average execution 0.04 milliseconds. And after the upgrade, we had 11.47 milliseconds. So significant, huge regression. Of course, the right way to fix this issue is to find the root cause for the change and act against it by rewriting the query or dealing with statistics or other database objects, putting a hint, whatever. But when this happens in production, usually you want to fix this as soon as possible. And the analysis requires some time knowledge, sometimes luck. With Query Store, you can almost instantly mitigate the issue. You can take the old plan and force its usage for execution under the new compatibility level. You simply pick the plan, click the force plan button, confirm that you're sure that you want to have this plan for the future executions, and all future executions will be done with nested loop space plan. So you can here see here that this indicating that this plan has been forced. Let's execute now again this same uh, query. It was faster and let's refresh the report. What we see here is the third plan. So plan number three 
SQL Server has created a new plan with the shape of the force plan. It does not literally reuse the existing plan, but it creates one which is a, from the shape almost identical. But when you look at the estimated number of rows, for instance, here is 269, and the original one is single row. So it's not identical plan, but the shape is identical. So I just want to have nested loop. I have a nested loop and it works. So when I look here, do mouse over, it was four milliseconds. Now it's 0 0.07 milliseconds. So it's very quick. So 0.04 and 0.07 seems to be okay. So compare with the previous value. What happens? SQL Server has created a new plan. Let's go to SQL Store plan to see these plans. So here is information about, uh, so here's a plan store. You see query ID 111. So this is the plan before the upgrade. This is the plan after the upgrade. And the third one is the plan that we have forced. We see here 150 compact levels. So we did not change the compact level. SQL Server is running and we have good performance. So Microsoft doesn't like XML data type. So therefore I need here to cast query plan info to get XML so that I can click here to the third plan. And here's our plan, nested loops join based. Go to XML representation. And in this plan, you can find the use plan attribute set to one. That indicates that this plan has been created with the shape of the force plan. This is how SQL Server, how Query Store indicates this, similar to the plan guides. So Query Store does not use plan guides, at least not the plan guides we know from previous SQL Server versions. It's similar, but it's not the same. You can force the plan by using graphical user interface, as I did, or you can use CP Query Store force plan store procedure. I would recommend you to use a store procedure in order to log all changes you made on your system. Clicking the button is not logged anywhere, and it is recommended to log all changes that are applied on production system that can affect performance. When I unforce this plan here, and when I execute the query again, let's me close this screen here. Most probably SQL Server will choose again uh, this wrong plan. So here is again, and here's again hash match join. Of course, it still thinks in the, uh, as after the upgrade that hash match is better solution. You can use CP query store force plan store procedure to force the plan. So let's use this exec CP query store force plan procedure. It accepts query ID parameter, which is one and we want to force plan also number one so this is basically um this plan but number one and this is now again you can see here again this sign that is that plan is forced and the next execution will be fast again so this is it's recommended to use special stop procedure for this this is a great feature. It allows you to fix a query plan regression without touching the code or changing other database objects. Many times it saved me and my company time and money. So I use it for more than four years, query store and also plan forcing within it. Once it was Friday afternoon, it might be 2016 or 2017, um, I had to pick up my son at this point, nine, 10 years old son from opera. All kids from Vienna primary schools visited the opera on that day and parents had to pick up their kids in front of the opera. I took my backpack and wanted to leave the office as I saw the red alert in our B2B dashboard. One important service started to have significant delays. Its main method was more or less a wrapper over a stop procedure and its plan has been suddenly so changed that the average execution time from 10 milliseconds jumped to 600 milliseconds. It 
was a late afternoon. I could not delegate the task handling the performance regression, but I had to leave the office and pick. I opened the plan, but unfortunately it was not so easy to apply a quick fix by using option recompile or some other hints. The plan suddenly got spool operators and it was not obvious how to get rid of them. I opened Query Storm, so that the plan has been changed a few minutes ago, and I knew which plan I would like to have, the same that we had before the change. I forced the last good plan, SQL Server respected my decision, the execution times goes back to 10 milliseconds, I could leave the office, pick up my son, I mitigated the issue without touching the code and without risk for business in less than two minutes. The entire weekend performance was stable and I was able to rewrite the query and fix the issue next week with enough time for testing considerations without pressure and stress that is related to the production environment. I would never touch the code during the peak times if I would, rather, if I would have other choice. And Query Store in this case was a great helper. Also, when I switched from uh, one important database from 110 for 250 combat level, we had to fix significant regressions in 23 store procedures. And we did this by using force plan feature in order to keep system running. In the next hours and days, we solved all regressions by rewriting queries and using hints. But plan forcing helped our system to work without interruptions and timeouts until we came with fixes. So the plan forcing is a secret weapon of query store. You can fix regressions by applying an old plan, but you have to be completely sure that you want to have exactly that plan for all future executions. I will repeat this sentence. You have to be completely sure that you want to have exactly that plan for all future executions. This is a huge responsibility. Therefore, you must have database owner permission, the highest permission level for a database if you want to force a plan. Consider the following example. Here I have a new database. I have created a sample table with million rows, events table. And here is a my stop procedure, sample stop procedure. I just want return events with event date after some given date. And uh, I will call this procedure with two different parameters. With high selective one, where procedure returns no rows, so zero rows affected. And when I use uh, with first first 2020, first January 2010, returns about 500,000 rows. So a huge difference. And now I will use Square Store here. It will not play here with uh, compat level changes. It's just I will execute this query thousand times. Then I will query cache and execute query with low selective parameter. Again, of course, I will use here um, the sky results. I do not want to paint these results, so no, no count on. Let's go here. So I need to switch to my database, sorry, new DB. So let's go to set query store. Execute this thousand times. It will take some time. Clear the cache. Execute this again three times. This will take some time. It's 500,000, not so. And let's go again. Find new DB. Query store top resource consuming reports. And we have almost identical re uh, situation as we saw before. A good plan here with an average execution time of uh, 0.42 milliseconds and a bad plan with average execution time of 3.6 seconds. And we can do the same thing as we saw in the first example. Let's force this plan. So it seems to be a good plan. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And let's execute this again. It's 500,000 rows. It will take some time. And then we will refresh this. We have the same situation as we saw here with uh, our um, first example. Let's go here, still executing 
will just wait a few seconds. Fortunately, it will be done soon. Come on. Still running. It doesn't look good. So when I refresh the report, I can find here the third plan. As we saw here, the same situation as here. SQL Server has created a third plan here also. And this third plan is a nested loops based one. So I want a nested loop. I got nested loops based plan. So respect my respected my decision. But we can see here that we did not force, we did not solve the issue. We even make it worse because we choose the wrong plan for this kind of query. This is a parameter sensitive query. And in parameter sensitive queries, there is no a single plan that is good for all executions. So this is a huge difference in these two examples. So therefore, when you look at the query store report, you have to be careful when you decide which plan to force. You need to know your query very well so that you know which plan is good for it according to your business or you need to check its past, its execution in the past to see all plans in, let's say, last four weeks. Then you can decide if this plan is good or not good for you. So therefore, it is important to configure query store so that you have enough information about the past executions in order to force plan. Here, we did not have past executions. We started from scratch, and this info guided me in the wrong direction. So remember, DB owner rights are required. You must know what you are doing. For instance, this screen shows an execution which could be a candidate for plan forcing. The entire week the execution was good with a single plan, then the plan is suddenly changed. If one week is representative enough for your workload, you could force the plan to mitigate the issue. I even want to see more. I'm more confident to see that the plan I would like to force has been used in past two months and not only in the past week. So therefore, it's important to configure query store that you have enough information. Of course, when you have such situation, it's not possible to pick a plan which is appropriate for future calls. Usually, you have a single plan and this plan has suddenly changed and the typical use case for first plan is to force the old plan if this plan is more or less was a single plan for a long time. Let me summarize this. Plan forcing is a great, powerful feature. It lets you fix the plan regression issue without touching the code, without business logic risk, by using an old good plan. However, this should be perceived as a temporary solution. Use plan forcing to let your system working, to buy time for you to find the root cause for the issue and to prepare the final solution. What happens when you force a plan? When you force a plan, SQL Server creates a new plan with the shape of the force plan. Forcing plan is a huge responsibility. It requires database owner permission. Plan forcing is not always a good idea as we saw. Please check carefully plan history for a query ID before you force the plan. And finally, use CP Query Store force plan special stop procedure rather than graphical user interface. You saw how plan forcing looks like and when to force a plan. Now you will see when forcing doesn't work. I mentioned several times that forcing plan is used to be a mitigation for a plan regression problem until we find a proper final solution. But until we find it, it should work. Fortunately, plan forcing does not always work. There are two types of issues with force plans. Plan forcing failure can happen when a plan based on the force plan is not possible anymore. That usually happens when index used by the plan is removed or renamed, or very rare when tables or other objects used in the plan are renamed or dropped. The second type of issues is when SQL Server ignores the force plan. There is no failure, a force plan is possible, but SQL Server simply ignores it. Let's see the first issue. It's time for the next demo, force plan failure. I will use again Whiteboard Importers database. 
I have created a new store procedure here. Get sales order since. I just want to get order and order details for all orders with a uh, after a given order date. To support my queries in my store procedure, I will add an index I1 on the order date column. So let me execute this. So this is my store procedure. When I execute this store procedure with high selected parameter, I get a nested loop space plan. And when I clear the cache and execute the proc again, but with low selected parameter, this is significantly more rows here, 100, about 100,000, and I get the hash match again. So let's assume now I want to force this plan, nested low space plan, for all future calls, regardless of parameter selectivity. This is not always a good idea, as we saw, but let's assume here I know what I'm doing. Okay. I will ensure that query store is on. I will execute this. Go here to find a procedure. Force plan. Now I will clear the cache and execute this procedure with low selective parameter. It takes some time, but it will work. Let's wait a bit. Refresh the plan. Ta da! So here, SQL Server has created a new plan, and this plan is the one I wanted to have. So nested loops based plan. Good. All fine. Now I will drop the index. So I drop the index I1, and this index is used in this plan. You can go here. See, so I1 index is used in this plan. So, what will happen now when I call this still procedure again? What can happen? What can SQL Server do? It can try to create a new plan. This plan will fail due to missing index. It can raise an exception and finish the query unsuccessfully. Or it can ignore the force plan and create its own plan. Okay. Let me execute this. A good news, the query did not fail. When you go to execution plan, we see hash match based plan. What SQL Server did here, it did actually both. It tried to create a force plan. This action failed. You can see here in queries in the report, queries with force plans. And you click here. You can find the force plan here, and here there is an attribute called force plan failure count. This counter has been incremented, and even you can find here less force plan failure description. So SQL Server put the description here, no index, that's the reason I failed. But after that, it creates a new plan as it would be without forcing, and the query execution did not fail. When you execute the query again, if the plan is in cache, this plan will be, of course, used. If plan is not in the cache, SQL Server will try again to create the plan based on the force plan. Let me execute this again. So here we have a for, uh, force plan failure incremented, but now when I click again, this plan is most probably in cache, we won't see here uh, increments, it's still two. So when plan is in cache, as in all cases, SQL Server will use it. But when, we did, when plan disappear, and let's force this, our plan is not in cache anymore. SQL Server will try to create, again, it will try to create force plan. This will fail, and we can see here, um, three, because the, uh, it fails for the third time. So forcing will work when you create the same index with the same name and the same leading column. If you create the index with another name or another column, the plan will still fail. Let's do this. Let's try to create the index with uh, index I2 uh, on order date column. 
this is exactly the same what we need for this query. So this plan actually needs an index on order date, but with the name I1. I'm going to execute this again. Also, SQL Server now has an index on, or, on the order date column. We can see here still for span four, and he said still no index because there is no index with the name I1. Okay, when we create an index with the na this name, but on another column, of course, this won't work. Let's create index I1. Now there is an index, but on different column. Of course, this will not work. Let's see what SQL Server will tell us in this case. Go here. As we expect, it's number five, but reason is a bit slightly different. Now they say no plan. So there is an index I1, but there, with this index, this plan is not possible. Of course, it has to search for order date and it cannot search when customer ID is a leading column. Let's drop these two indexes and let's create now index on order date, but this index is not identical to the one I had. So it's not necessary to have exact index definition. It is required that leading column is the same as it was in the first case. So I will create a composite index this time, order date customer ID, and now it will work. You can see here, it will take a bit more time. Let me refresh here. This DMV, we're still here with five, and we see here uh, another execution is. So this is a very good reaction, of course, to, our, to this challenge. One can say it's not a big deal. This is what we expected anyway. However, when you use index hints in a query and remove the index after that, the query will fail. So consider this example. Here I'm using index name in the hint, so with index I1. And when you execute this query, it works. Now I will drop the index and execute the query again. Query fails. Here SQL Server can do the same, but it doesn't. So just expect index, can create a plan based on, can scan the table, but it doesn't. So kudos for query star for this challenge. So what SQL Server does in case of force plan failure, it tries to create a plan based on the force plan. After realizing that this is not possible, it increments the counter of force plan failures, then sets reason for the last failure, then it creates a new plan as it would do without forcing. So this is a very good reaction of where to start. Here's the list of possible failure reasons. You can see that even timeout is possible. Also, the query optimizer got the plan that should be generated. It still goes through all optimization phases, and these can lead to the comp compilation timeout. I never saw this in Query Store, but someone definitely did. And Microsoft has introduced in SQL Server 2019 a feature, uh, actually a database configuration item, accelerated plan forcing which instructs Query Optimizer not to go through all optimization phases in case of force plans. Another more interesting, more painful, and less documented issue is when SQL Server ignores force plans. There is no failure, everything seems to be fine, but forcing doesn't work. Let's see the first example. I'm using again the whiteboard importers. This is the same procedure you saw in the previous demo. I want to force this a uh, nested loop space plan for this uh, procedure. And let me execute this too to ensure that query store is on. And here's a my call the procedure, force the plan, and execute this with low selective parameter. When I go here, so SQL Server has created a new plan based on nested loops, all fine. This is what I wanted. And Let's assume that somebody execute this piece of code right now. Here is same definition as we saw before. So this stop procedure did not change. The same code, but somebody drop and create procedure. You can still see this piece of code in install files generated by users. Since alter procedure statement exists from, I think, SQL Server 2016 Service Pack 2. 
So it's not rare to find this query. Since create procedure must be the first statement in the batch, you cannot use if not exist create, but this drop create pattern. What does it mean now for plan forcing? Let's execute this and let's execute this again. So before we execute, let's check the executions uh, count here. Here is we had one execution with one plan and one execution uh, with new plan. Let's execute this again. One, two, three. Now we have three exec executions. We expect here four executions, right? One. Let's check this one. One. So it seems to see that, uh, that query store does not capture information about this query anymore. When we refresh this one here, we can find another query with query ID 6. This does not have nested loops join plan. It has a hash match join plan, but it is executed five times. Exactly number of times that I execute this after this code execution. Let's execute for the sixth time and refresh this. And now it is six. So this is our query. So what happens here? When we go to this DMVs, query text and query uh, and this query store query, what can we see here is the query text number one, uh, query text ID is one because we did not touch the text, we did not change the query text. But in the query, you can find two query IDs, one and six. Query text is the same, but this information here, object ID is not. With drop create, pattern, SQL Server has created a new object ID for the same store procedure. And since this is a new object ID, it's basically, it creates a new query ID for the same query. Here's a very important conclusion. When you force a plan, you do not force it for a particular query, but for a particular query ID. When your query becomes a new query ID, the plan forcing doesn't work. There is no failure. The force plan is still there, but the query with the old ID won't be called anymore. It has got a new life with a new query ID. It mutated as a virus, and all you applied against it under the old query ID doesn't work anymore, just like a virus. When you change the query text after plan forcing, let's do the same. It's the very same step procedure. And let's repeat this action. And now after plan forcing, I will here just write the comment. Here we force the plan with all the procedure. So this time we did not change, the, we did not drop the object. And when you execute this again, let's go here. Again, we can see query with ID 2. So it's new query ID, so this is not respected. We can see here only an execution. DMVs, we can see why? So this time we have a new query text ID. And since you have a new query text ID, of course, you will have also query ID. And this time object ID is not changed, but this thing has been changed and we end up with the same problem. So as soon as you touch it, as soon as you, add, as you add new column or something, or even when you add a comment, all things related to this query ID is gone. SQL Server will assign a new Query store will assign a new query ID to this query and forcing is not applicable anymore. Also, when there are different values for environment variables in the query execution, as it was at the time of plan forcing, this also can affect plan forcing and can lead to generation of new query IDs. So consider this. This is again our uh, very same example, but this time I will here play with uh, arithmetic abort flag and I just send to off and then to on and execute the query again. And as you might guess, when I go here again, I will find the query IDs again, query ID. And also I force the plan with nested loops join, I see again hash match join. When we track these two DMVs, we can see again query ID. Query, ID, query text is the same, object is the same, but context setting side is not the same. So the same thing happens when you play with parameterization type. This is maybe something you have expected, but now 
something undocumented. I will now use user table types, actually table value parameters for my store procedure. My table value parameter, I call it CSL, comma separated list, and um, here is my user table type. And then I will use this user table type as table value parameter for store procedure. One of the typical use cases for TVP, you just give a list of IDs, but not as a list, but as a table for TVP. And then I just join this with sales orders to get uh, order details for, uh, uh, for IDs that I give with TVP. So this is my store procedure. And again, let's call query store. I want to have assistance of query store in this. I will fill this with 10 IDs. I will just call this procedure for 10 user IDs. And let me include this execution plan. And again, my favorite plan, so nested loops join, right? When I clear the cache and call this with 2000 order IDs, here is a merge join. And as you might guess, they will again force the nested loop join plan. I will force this plan and then see what happens. OK, so let's execute this. Go to the plan and I just want to force this plan. OK. And clear cache. Execute. So here we are. SQL Server has created a new plan based on nested loops join as I wanted. All fine. Now, I will execute alter procedure statement without changes, not drop create, alter, and no changes here, no comments, just an alter procedure statement. When you execute alter procedure statement, the only change that should happen is that SQL Server should discard plan from cache and to create a new one when you call for the first time star proc. No other changes. This is what we expect here. And again, this is something you can see in many SQL install files because people are lazy and just include all procedures, even uh, procs that uh, are not changed in the main, uh, since the last rollout. Let me execute alter and let's call this again. As you might guess, this won't work. Plan forcing won't work in this case. We had here one execution. I will refresh this. We still have one execution. Let's refresh again. 10 query ID with number 10. This is actually the same query. This is our query, and this is a merge join that we do not want to see here. So what happens here? Let's go again to query text and query DMV. One, so query ID two and query ID 10. This is the same, the same query text ID, same context settings, same object ID, the same query hash, and what is different is this value here, batch SQL handle. And when you look at this carefully, only this part is actually different. So a few characters here. Whenever I touch this and execute this again, so I will alter procedure, execute this again once, twice. Now we will see two more query IDs. 16 and 17 with exactly the same same attributes expect except this one. So here there is something related to time. And of course, that means that all you did with previous with the same query, of course, all you did with previous query IDs is gone. And finally, one a bit bizarre case. This time, no changes at all. No drop create, no alter. No environment var variables changes. We do just failover. As an introduced query store, I mentioned that its content belongs to database and it survives crashes and failovers. After a failover, it should work exactly as it worked before. Well, almost always. 
Here I have just screenshots. I have again a stop procedure using TVPs, and I forced the plan for run stop procedure. After that, they did just failover. After the failover, plan forcing did not work. So when I check the queries, I find again two query IDs. And again, this a batch SQL handle was different. So this time, right side of this uh, attribute was the same because I did not execute all the procedure statement, but just these two characters were different. 14 and 10. What is 14 and 10? That was DB IDs for a My Database. My Database was in AG, Availability Group, but did not have the same database as the on primary and secondary. When we moved to secondary, plan force did not work. When we moved back from secondary to primary, after one day, after patching, it started to work. So it's a bit bizarre case, but again, this DBID is somehow part of this SQL batch handle, therefore plan force did not work. Let's summarize this part of the session. A force plan is associated to a query ID and not to a query. The query ID is very sensitive and its uniqueness depends on the following attributes. Query text ID, object ID, context settings ID, query parameterization, and batch SQL handle. When query ID is changed, force plan is not applied. This happens when you make any change in a query. As soon as you touch the query, it's over, even with comments. When you drop and create objects, when environment variables are changed, when parameterization type is changed, and especially when your procedure uses table value parameters, if you execute alter statement, you can forget about plan forcing. And the last topic in this session, automatic tuning. As mentioned at the beginning, automatic tuning is an enterprise edition feature. If you want to use this feature, you need to have at least SQL Server 2017 and enterprise edition. This is very ambitious SQL Server feature. It continuously monitors and learns about your workload, try to find issues and improvements, and can apply fixes for these issues and improvements and verify them. There is a bit misunderstanding re regarding this name, automatic tuning. In an on-prem world, automatic tuning is the same as automatic plan correction. In SQL Azure, in addition to automatic plan correction, there is another feature, automatic index management, but currently only in SQL Azure. An automatic plan correction is not always automatic. When Query Store is enabled and you have Enterprise Edition, automatic tuning is always turned on. You cannot turn it off. All you can is to provide a value for the four slash good plan parameter. If you set this parameter to off, that means automatic tuning will recommend you improvements and fixes, but it's up to you whether this should be implemented or not. You can use DMV, DMDB tuning recommendations to consume results of this analysis. If you set this parameter to on, Query Store takes over all these things. Query Store applies and verifies applied changes. Go to the last demo in this session. In this demo, I'm going to use the same example I used in the first demo. We'll simulate the upgrade from SQL Server 2012 to 2019. Here's the code. I will set database to the compat level 110, then use Query Store, execute query 100 times, switch to 150, and execute the same query 100 times. The only change is this line. I want to ensure that four slash good plan parameter is set to off. That means we expect from automatic tuning performance regression recommendations. Let's execute this code. In the first example, I used this report, top resource consuming queries, to find regressions. That was easy since I have only one query. In production, usually we have thousands or ten thousands of queries, and it's not easy to use reports to get regressions. We can use this DMV. This DMV contains all regressions identified by automatic tuning. We know that we have a regression here, and let's see if this is identified by automatic tuning, and we see it is. So here's a reason why Average CPU time changed from 0.02 milliseconds to 8.18 milliseconds. That's the reason why this query appears in um, this DMV. And we have additional information such, such valid scenes, that means when this uh, change is detected, and few columns with JSON details. And I have a more friendly query here, I mean more friendly f uh, to be consumed, not not to be written, but here we have also a command. We have also query ID here, plan, regress plan, recommended plan, and so on. 
and here is a command. If I, if I would use this command, this regression will disappear according to automatic tuning. Since this offline recommendation, it's up to me now, should I execute this or not. Usually what I do is I use this query ID. I go to the track reports here and use this report to see if forcing is a good idea or not. And then I force the plan, let's say. In this case, I can force the plan as I did in the first example. And now we can execute the code again and verify that forcing did work. So we have a third plan and this third plan nested loops plan so it works according to our expectations. Manually forced plan stays in the system forever until somebody unforces it. You can use another query dealing with the state JSON column to see the status of the forced plan and when it says success that means the plan is in the system and it's persistent. However, the content of this DMV is not persistent. That means when server crashes, when you have a failover or restart, all automatic tuning has collected is gone. It starts from scratch. And as a reminder, since this is a part of the automatic tuning feature, this DMV is also Enterprise Edition. If you don't have Enterprise Edition, you won't see this DMV. This is the way how I use automatic tuning in off mode. I want to see all queries automatic tuning detected as a regression, but I want to decide about the plan forcing. Documentation about automatic tuning is pretty poor. You cannot find information when a query is considered by automatic tuning as regress query. How much CPU must increase in order to see a query in this DMV. That was off mode. Let's see the on mode. I will now slightly change this example. Instead of off, I will use here on for four slash good plan. And I will execute this query now. Let's go to our report. And we see here there is no plan forcing. So it doesn't seem that automatic tuning in this mode works. So what happens here? I don't know. As you might guess, it is not documented how many times you have to execute a query or what is the total CPU time used by queries in order to see automatic tuning in action. I will change now these values to 1500 and this one for instance for 500 and let's try again let's check now now it seems that works so you can see here the third plan that means automatic tuning has applied a fix identified regression and applied the last good plan the last good plan is this nested loops join based and it did it after 19 executions with bad plan so 20 execution was already with a new fix. As I mentioned earlier, when a plan is manually forced, it stays forever in the system. However, when a plan is automatically forced, its status depends on the uh, verifying process, which is done also by automatic tuning. When I execute this query again, now we see that the reason for this plan is less good plan forced, but the current status is verifying. So automatic tuning verifies this it's not sure if this will be good and when you see here verifying that means this is not persistent yet if I would restart server now forcing will not work when I start the server again let me summarize automatic queuing and plan forcing in the offline mode plan is forced manually and it is persistent in the online mode query store automatically force plans and they are usually not persistent between restarts of SQL Server instance I use automatic tuning in the offline mode. This DMV is very useful for me. I have even created notifications on top of it. Whenever an important query changes its plan, I get an email. I don't use online mode. To delegate plan forcing responsibility to automatic tuning to a tool, I need to understand exactly how this tool works in documented way. I need to share the same definition about plan regression with this tool. This is also not documented. And I need to trust the tool due to lack of documentation, I'm still in offline mode. Let's summarize this session. Plan forcing is a very powerful feature and allows you to fix plan regression without code changes. Use this feature as a workaround and not as a solution until you find the proper solution.
This is a huge responsibility and therefore you need DB owner permissions. Force plan is associated with a query ID and not with a query. Be, be careful with parameter sensitive queries and queries using table value parameters. Since SQL Server can ignore force plans, check regularly whether plan forcing is still respected or not. You can use, for instance, queries with force plan reports to check this. Thank you very much for your attention and enjoy the rest of the conference. Bye bye.